Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. A few of you have asked me to talk about motivation. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Now for those of you who listen to this podcast regularly, you'll know that I don't have a lot of patience with the word motivation. In my opinion, if you want to do something, it gets done. If you don't want to do it, it doesn't get done. There's no uh, other way to describe it. I had someone uh, on italki last week and they told me, oh, you know, Teacher Joseph, I couldn't do my homework because I wasn't motivated. I asked, where are you busy? And they said, no, I just wasn't motivated. My week was very dull and boring. I said, well, what did you do? And they said, well, I smoked some cigarettes. I watched some bad movies. And I said, yeah, but if you'd really wanted to study English, you would have done it. And they said, no, 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 I, I, I wasn't motivated, you know, so I couldn't. And the point I was trying to make is that being motivated itself is not a good excuse. I mean, if you're saying you have mental health problems, yeah, fine. If you're saying that you just didn't have time or there was an issue with time management, fine. Yeah, absolutely. That's perfectly acceptable. If you were saying that maybe you were worried or anxious or had other things on your mind, yeah, I can relate to that as well. But just to say I, I wasn't motivated as an excuse, as a badge to wear, doesn't really tell me anything. It's, it's kind of like a get out clause. You know, when you sign a contract to take on a house or to buy something, there's usually some kind of escape clause on there where the other party that's signing it can terminate the agreement at any moment. That's generally referred to as an escape clause or a get-out clause where you can cancel at any point. So when we talk about motivation, it seems a little bit like that. It's, it's a way of escaping, taking real responsibility for what you could have done. Now, it's not, a, it's not saying that you're a bad person. It's not saying that you are maybe um, doing something wrong. All I'm saying is that you haven't done your homework or you haven't studied English, there is a reason for that. And motivation, not being motivated is not a reason. It might be you were tired. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. And it may be that the reasons you had for not doing your work are perfectly acceptable. We're all entitled to some rest. Uh, we all need just to do nothing for a while. And that's fine. But that brings up another issue then of how am I using my time to ensure that I do get to study English. Another thing that uh, people say is, oh, I just didn't have the right study material, which again is perfectly acceptable. If you don't have the right study material, it's understandable why you don't want to study. But it's important to recognize that. Recognition in what's wrong or what's behind that lack of motivation is really, really important. Because you can learn a lot about yourself just by looking under the hood. Now, that's an American expression. Uh, when you open up a car to look at the engine of the car, 
It's called looking under the hood. We use it here in Britain as well, but uh, when we open up a car, we usually say looking under the bonnet, which is a type of hat. We don't usually say looking under the hood. <clears throat> Um, but as a metaphor, we use that, okay? So looking under the hood to examine why the homework wasn't done or whatever else is really, really important. Now, you know, my grandmother, uh, she was a very wise woman. I didn't realize it at the time, but she used to say little things which were very enlightening and Sometimes I remember them and I smile. One of the things she used to say, you know, when I used to say, oh, I'm not happy and I'm depressed today, uh, especially in the morning time, she used to say, well, if you want to be happy in the morning, go to bed that way. If you want to wake up happy, go to bed happy. And it was such a simple bit of advice, you know, that applies to all of us. But um, with regards to what we're talking about, about motivation and these things, um, she obviously realized that many people were not really in touch with their feelings. And there was a lot of time being wasted and a lot of stuff that simply wasn't being done. And she was always encouraging us to not, look at our emotions exactly, but just to take responsibility for our time. She was born in the 1920s and she used to uh, do things because as a community, it was what she did, you know, like for example, um, uh, as a community, people would you know, on certain days, go out walking, like on Sundays. So you'd bump into friends and family. On other days, the community would socialize. So she seemed to realize that younger people like myself, we were wasting a lot of time because we weren't doing things together with other people. We were spending time alone and getting kind of lost in that time because our time was no longer accountable. And a few times she asked me, so what did you do yesterday? And I would say things like, um, I, I'm not sure. I think I watched TV. I walked the dog. Um, and I couldn't give her any real things, any kind of substance. And she said, it sounded like you've lost a lot of time there. Didn't you want to you know, help your mother with the cooking or uh, help your father or meet with friends. You seem to have lost a lot of time in doing nothing there. And as I tried to, to go over that, of course, she was right. You know, I was losing a lot of time. And it wasn't until I started writing down what I was doing and looking at how I could use my time better, uh, that I made a lot of discoveries. It was almost like I was doing loads of things, but not really having anything at the end of them. And this is something that um, I still go over. I still like to look at my time to see what I could do better. These days, I'm up at uh, 6 a.m. making podcasts, posting them early, preparing dinner, cleaning, um, before I start work at midday. I think I use my time very wisely. Although at the weekends, I'm not sure that all of my time is productive. But that's okay. Your time doesn't have to be always productive, but you need to be very clear on what you're doing and why you're doing it. I think men in particular, we often do things and say things without thinking about them. We, we don't really have uh, anything else to, um, 
any deeper idea of the thing that we're doing is what I want to say. Let me just give you an example of that. I have a friend who recently became vegan. And I asked, oh, you became vegan. Why? And she said, well, it, it was just the best thing to do. And I said, yeah, uh-huh. Why? And she said, well, um, it just seemed like the next logical life step. And I said, yeah, uh-huh, okay, why? And she couldn't give me an answer. And I kept asking until eventually she got angry with me and she said, I don't know, it just seemed right. And I said, okay, so it was just a feeling you had then. And she said, yeah. And then, of course, uh, several months later, she gave it up. She quit. In trying to ask her this, I, I realized that there wasn't any deeper kind of idea behind it. It was simply something she hadn't really thought out properly. It was something that she tried to bring into her life. But because it didn't come from any deeper place, it became, I think, for her, something which was an additional task. She got used to it so much, though, that she didn't think about why she was doing it. And I think we often find ourselves in that situation as well. On Sundays, I often go out walking. I like it because I like to take the exercise. But I realized my thinking was becoming very negative when I was walking, probably because of the number of drug addicts and drunk people that I would see on the streets. But aside from that, my thinking wasn't the best that it could be. So I thought to myself, well, how could I make this more interesting? And so what I did was I arranged with some students that I would show them my town on Skype. And I became a kind of a tour guide on Skype just to show them around. Involving other people meant that I became more productive. Things became more interesting for me. And because I was sharing with other people, um, it really helped me a lot to understand more about myself. These days, when I go out walking, there are times, of course, that I, I need to be alone. We all need that time. I'm not saying that every moment of your time has to be productive, but sometimes just to share or to keep a note of what you're doing really helps to understand why you're doing things. I think as men, particularly, we do many things and we don't know why. The vegan thing is one example, although that was a woman. I met a man recently and uh, he told me that he'd uh, joined the church. And I said, oh, that's great. So did you have some new belief then that came into your life? And he said, no. I said, okay, so are you going there because you want to have some kind of different idea or belief? And he said, mm, I don't know. I said, well, why, why do you go there? And he said, well, one of my friends goes there and he invited me. I said, good, good. He said, would you like to come along? And I said, well, I would only go along if I either I was supporting you or doing it as a favor to you or because I actually believed what they said. But I'm willing to listen to you if you want to tell me what they do there to see whether it's something that I would want to do. And he said, you're making this awful complicated. Of course, he should have said, you're making this awfully complicated. But he doesn't have the best English, even though he's a native speaker. He said, you're making this awful complicated. I said, you mean awfully complicated? I said, I'm not really. I'm just trying to get you to take responsibilities for your actions because I do things because either I want to do them or there's a reason for doing them. And he said, no, no, I, I don't really think about it so deeply. I just go. So, of course, 
uh, asking him more questions meant that he just get upset as well. And uh, uh, we stopped talking about it. But my point is this. If you are the kind of person, first of all, that's uh, like that, or if anything I've said kind of resonates with you, you really need to be thinking about why you're doing a lot of the things in your life because it could free up a lot of your time. So I want you to get a pen and a bit of paper and just keep a note of what's happening because if you're like me, you're going to discover that whole bits of your life or whole chunks of your day just disappear. And it might not be always clear where that goes. Um, in the past, when I used to get up very early, I found myself just sitting on the sofa, thinking about podcasts, not doing them. Then an hour would pass, two hours would pass, I'd be drinking tea, and then I'd think, you know, that's such a waste because I did nothing except think about it. And I don't have any plans now. Whereas my time now, these days, is spent usually meditating for at least half an hour or an hour just to quieten my mind. Um, if any of this sounds familiar, I think it's time for you to take a pen and a piece of paper and just begin to write down exactly where your time goes. Now, I'm not saying this to make you more productive. I don't want you to rush out and, you know, put more things in your calendar. The idea is to do less things, but to make that time free to really do the things that you want. And when it comes to learning English, what you can do is you can simply um, write down on a piece of paper your 10 reasons for learning English you might be surprised after three or four as to how many others you can't get. Now, I need to say that uh, that's the way I felt in some of the languages that I've been learning. And it made me question, well, why bother? If I'm not really motivated, if I don't really have any real reasons for doing this, maybe I want to stop. Because when you start a new hobby, it needs to have some connection to your life. You know, it has to, even if it's just to say, well, I think I'll enjoy it and watching your joy level go up, you know. Anyway, that's my talk today on motivation. I hope that it's inspired one or two of you, but do be looking at your free time just to see exactly what's happening in it. And why you're doing the things you do, because many of us seem to be walking around like robots, doing things because it's maybe just habits we haven't let go of, or maybe it's because things we think are bringing us joy and they're not. It's really time for a, for a rethink, especially if you're one of these people who's always saying that you're not motivated, but you don't know why. That's it for me. See you all. Bye.